Well, this is the single largest investment in reef restoration and management in Australia's history. The money will go towards improving water quality, working with farmers to prevent sediment, nitrogen and pesticide runoff into the reef, ensuring that we tackle the crown of thorn starfish, which is a natural predator to the coral and has done enormous uh, damage over the last three decades, and using the best available science to ensure that our coral is resilient to heat stress and to light stress. Uh, we'll be working with traditional owners, we'll be working with the tourist industry, we'll be working with farmers and most importantly of all we'll be working with scientists to ensure that we give the reef the best possible future. So some of this money then will go directly to farmers to modify their practices? Absolutely, working closely with farmers to modify their practices to ensure that the reef doesn't get uh, the large amounts of sediment, nitrogen and pesticide runoff which is so damaging to coral and which helps breed this crown of thorns and starfish. Are you saying that the biggest threat posed to the reef at the moment is contamination from agriculture and from urban development rather than global warming? I've always said the biggest threat to the reef is climate change. Uh, we've seen right across the world a number of reefs uh, being hit by this heat stress uh, and this is combined here in Australia with also Cyclone Debbie as well as the Crown of Thorns starfish. So you've got lots of things happening at once, all of which are damaging to the reef. That is why we need a full court press. This is why the announcement today is such a game changer. It will help secure the reef's future for generations to come. So as well as that money directed towards farmers to modify their practices, you're also saying uh, some of it will go into science to perhaps um, uh, find adaptions for uh, coral that would be more resilient to climate change. Absolutely. Millions of dollars will go into science and to better data management and to be able to test the impacts on the reef. Uh, we are looking at a whole range of new initiatives, uh, taking the best advice of the experts, working closely with the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority uh, to ensure that the reef has its best chance into the future. That's why today's announcement has been hailed by the tourist operators, by the traditional owners, uh, by uh, the those experts in the field. Minister, you've been out on the reef yourself, you've, you've taken a good look at it. Do you get the feeling that, that some of the damage on the reef is irreparable? Look, I'm told by the experts that the reef can be remarkably resilient, that after a bleaching event, and let's not forget the first bleaching event goes back to 1998 and we've had significant bleaching events in 2016 and 2017, that we can see the corals start to come back in five to ten years after that. Indeed, in the, three, in the years leading up, to the bleaching event in 2016, we saw the coral cover increase by 19%. So the reef is resilient and it's important to tell the world that this is so. Uh, the reef supports some 64,000 jobs, over $6 billion it is worth to the economy and it attracts more than 2 million visitors a year. So it's a natural and national and international icon and that is why we're so determined to preserve it for future generations.